Hello, everyone. Uh, I think we're going to start now. So thank you very much for uh, taking the time to join this talk about uh, transformers in the growing torch ecosystem. So I want to introduce myself a little bit. So uh, I'm Arthur, and uh, I'm a core maintainer of transformers and uh, tokenizers at uh, Hackingface, and I've been doing that for the past uh, almost three years now. Don't hesitate to follow me on GitHub. I haven't been able to grow that. So today we'll talk a bit about the history of Transformers, uh, then the philosophy, um, the place of Torch in Transformers, and then scaling the philosophy of Transformers. Actually, we should call this the history of PyTorch pre-trained BERT. This was the original name of the Transformers library. So already very, very PyTorch-centric. So the first release, it was uh, mostly for BERT. So uh, the BERT model was supported, and that was back in uh, 2018. Then with the arrival of the first release, uh, we renamed the library to uh, PyTorch Transformers, so still very much uh, PyTorch-centric. Uh, and we saw the arrival of uh, five new models. So it was a small growth, but still a growth, I guess. Now that's where we messed up, right? TF support, yeah, we kind of went to the dark side. <laughs> but um, still, um, some new models, so XLM, for example. Uh, shout out to uh, the creators, creators of XLM, because with that, we could say we could support 102 languages. It was uh, pretty impressive for the time. So that's uh, 2019. Then V3, so that's where we saw uh, kind of a rapid growth, uh, a lot more models. So let's list them, CTRL, Distilled GPT-2, Albert, Camembert, GPT-2, XLT, 5 Japanese, Bert, PPLM, Finnish, Bert, Bart, Flaubert, T5, Electra, Marion, Reformer, Longformer. Yeah, quite a lot of models. Uh, but that, all, that is also when, for people who were there at the time, we started to have some of the stuff that defined transformers today. So the Rust tokenizers, the pipeline, the auto model, the auto tokenizer, the bugs, maybe. <laughs> Now for V4, um, I just couldn't list all of the models. Uh, there were just too many models, sorry. Probably 250 new models. Um, but that is really thanks to the, uh, the community. So the, the contributors starting rap started wrapping up and people started adding a lot of new models. The AI field was growing also super fast. For V5, uh, yeah, no, not yet. We'll, we'll talk about that later on. So as I was saying, uh, the number of paper was very much steadily increasing, and uh, the ecosystem was boiling. And this is, of course, we can, we can see that in the number of publications related to ML and AI. Uh, I stole that from people, but yeah, fine. The Transformers library that was, at the beginning, very much research-centric, researcher-centric, uh, used by researchers for research, um, steadily evolved and grew into something that is now used by, I hope, everyone here. Yeah. and. Um, students and also engineers. So the, the Transformers paper is uh, cited every year and um, people who publish stuff about machine learning and, and AI and, and language model and Transformers and that use Transformers, they, they cite Transformers, so that's super good. But we also invested in uh, courses, so uh, NLP courses, uh, courses in collaboration with Coursera, and also uh, created some books uh, about how you can use Transformers and diffusion models and the Hagen Face ecosystem was, was growing quite a lot. Now, if you want a few stats, I think PIP is not a great uh, statistics, but still, I mean, the, we have a clear trend uh, increase in, in downloads um, and quite an equivalent trend for the number of models that are used on the hub. So this, this, this tells us that we have around uh, 2 million weekly users, uh, people who, who use the models uh, that are compatible with the Transformers library. All of this, I really want to emphasize, is thanks to the awesome community that we have uh, uh, with Hugging Face, but Transformers as well. So the people have been very much benevolent uh, on the issues, the pull requests, and the researchers as well, they have been contributing a lot, and this has been accelerating, so taking the time to thank everyone for that. Now let's talk about the philosophy of Transformers. So as everyone knows, there has been a growing number of models that were published, and each model came with some changes, sometimes very small, sometimes a lot of changes, but
but architectural changes. And this meant that there were many different variations of the, for example, attention formulation. So more than, let's say, 300. And the choice we made was not to go with abstraction and not use inheritance at all. And so we call that the single model, single file. So with every single new model, we create a new file that corresponds to that model. And we do repeat ourselves. It's something that is maybe controversial, but that's the way we chose. And so we have, um, yeah, let's say 250 different attention formulations. Some of them are the same, so we copy paste the code. And for that, um, there are a lot of, uh, of reasons why we chose to go with that. So as I said, there were a lot of attention formulation. Again, it's, uh, we can't have one abstract layer that supports everything. Also, we really wanted to make sure that our models, the old models, are fixed in time. So if someone goes to the Transformers library today and has a look at the BERT model, the BERT code, it's exactly or almost exactly the same as it was published around four years ago. And that is super important for us because we don't want to add uh, new features or new formulation or new specific tricks because we want to make sure people can reproduce the results. Now, uh, as I again related to abstraction, abstraction code is not very simple. Um, and since we are very much contribution centered, we rely on contribution a lot and on the community a lot. We want to make sure people can easily contribute I and mean, we don't want it to be a puzzle. And that is because we have a small, but I want to say mighty team of uh, 15 maintainers for the, quite the entire ecosystem around transformers that also includes uh, PEFT, tokenizers, uh, TRL, Light of Al, all of the libraries that uh, revolve around the transformers and the hacking face ecosystem. So that's not a lot of people. Uh, and as the, the contribution matters, we need to make sure people can produce reproducers quite easily. We need to make sure that uh, people can fix the bugs themselves. Uh, that way they work for us a bit. <laughs> uh, that the code base is easy to learn, but also easy to tap in. And that's one of the last main points, but at the beginning, everyone knows that uh, it was a mayhem. It was uh, uh, quite a mess, and uh, there were code base everywhere, and it was quite hard to reproduce the results. So we wanted people to easily just copy paste the modeling BERT and be able to play with it and integrate it in their modeling code without having to dip dive in all of the layers of abstraction that can come with uh, inheritance code. So we reach here the most technical part of my talk. <laughs> it's uh, very small. It is um, to introduce you the core concept of how we make sure people copy paste the, copy -paste the code, sorry. So we use what we call the, uh, you know, the copy, copied from transformers. So when you put that mention on top of a code, it means that the entire class, for example, was uh, copied from. So the gamma attention, for example, is exactly the same as llama. So in our code base, we say this is copied from the llama modeling code. And maybe it's the same for the overall uh, gamma model. So what we want is make sure that when people um, add new models to transformers, we enforce that where they say the code is copied, we, just don't, we don't just trust them, right? So we have a, a CI and we have a tool that we call make fixed copies. So if you added uh, let's have fun, for example, somewhere that it doesn't match the copy, then you're gonna run the util. Oh, okay, it's not gonna work first time. Now it works. And we detect that there are changes and we overwrite your code to make sure that it matches the copies. We also have a CI that enforces that, and so we make sure that all of, the, all of the code that is supposed to be copied from is always copied from. This uh, was one of the core principles of the Transformers philosophy. The second one um, is just as important is we avoid having arguments uh, when you call the init function uh, of an NN module. So we try to pass everything in a config. So here are two examples of before, after. So the first one is you just have to remove the arguments and you put them in the config. And then the second one is we try to avo avoid code paths. So if you can or cannot have a, a positional embedding, we're gonna ask you to create a class that has one and a class that doesn't have one. This is because one of our main, um, let's say dream, because it cannot always happen, is that you just look at the config and you look at the modeling, you look at the, the model that you just loaded in RAM, and you can already know exactly what's going on. You can already follow the path of the model. And for us that have been adding a, having a lot of models, it was very, very, very helpful to make sure you have reproducibility, but also you have uh, good expectations. 
Now let's talk a little bit about torsion transformers. Um, more than 813,000 models on the hub support torch. So we didn't really go fully on the dark side, I guess. Um, this includes a public plus private, but for public models, it's uh, half a million, so that's, uh, that's a huge number. Um, we forget to mention, uh, Torch is not just that. Uh, of course, uh, we, we, I didn't write it here, but uh, we can run the models forward path and backward pass without having to do anything. That's super cool. Uh, I don't think people recognize that today, but uh, it wasn't really that easy before, even though I wasn't there around, but yeah. Um, but what we have seen in the past uh, few years, I think, and what we have benefited the most, most in Transformers um, is for one, the uh, functional SDPA, so having a wrapper around uh, the, the attention. So uh, this is a small, quick benchmark, but yeah, we, we saw a lot of speed up. Um, this is just one forward pass, but you can imagine that when you're generating, uh, it scales a lot, and you also have a cool uh, memory uh, improvement, so that was very nice. Uh, more recently, the work on Compile is absolutely amazing. So um, here are some benchmarks for Llama and for Whisper. Um, when we added the support for tor Torch Compile in Transformers for these models, we saw around a 4x to 5x uh, performance improvement. And for people who know about Transformers, who have seen the code base and who know about Generate, so Generate is a very complicated method, but that can do a lot of stuff for you. And today you can just apply Compile to it and have all of this improvement uh, uh, introduced just with one small wrapper. And that's very, very important for us because in Transformers, we have always been against having kernels in the library. It's also a part, of the, part of the philosophy. And Torch is really just the best match for us because you can improve your model and you can have better, better performances just by using torch.compile. And so for, for people, for GPU poor people, I don't know if you are here, I'm GPU poor. Um, this means you can use, for example, offloaded static cache. Um, it means that you compile uh, an object that, is, that we call the offloaded static cache, and you can run a model with a very long context, and the cache can be offloaded to CPU, for example. So if you're GPU poor, you should use that. Uh, most recently, we've been collaborating a lot with the Torch team and the Executor team uh, to make sure that you can potentially uh, put Transformers model in production. And we're really, really super happy about that because it's a long-standing dream of us. Uh, the community really wants uh, to be able to use Transformers model everywhere. And if they are slow, if they don't work well, if they're, uh, if they're not efficient, they're not gonna use them. But with Executorch, we believe that there's a way to easily make sure that the models can be uh, used in production. So for now, we only have one model, but we hope that the support is gonna be wrapped up for uh, uh, most of the models, yeah. We've also been working with the FSDP team, uh, most recently the AOE team. So again, this is for GPU poor people who can quantize the model and it's compile compatible and you can run it. So pretty cool. Now, I also wanna take time again um, to make sure people know that Torch is not just a library, but it's also an entire ecosystem and uh, a community as a whole. So I listed some of the uh, people who I've worked with personally, uh, this past two or three years. Uh, of course, it's just not everyone. I'm sorry if I forgot about you. Um, but yeah, the, the community is, is very, very nice. And I think Torch ha has enabled the creation of this entire ecosystem as a whole. And whether they use Transformers or not, um, they are doing God's work, I think. So thank you, everyone. It's not done. So now we're gonna talk a little bit about um, how the philosophy of Transformers has been with the, uh, the incredible growth of new models. So yeah, we have problems. Um, this is the amazing uh, Seamless M4T model from the, the Meta team. And the problem is it's 5,000 5, lines of code. It's just too big and people have a hard time uh, contributing to it. Uh, I think no one has actually, apart from, from when we added the model. The problem is this model supports too many stuff. It's, it's speech to text, speech to speech, text to speech, text to text. So that's a lot, and that's a lot of different attention modules. And since we don't have abstraction, yeah, that, that's, uh, that's our problem, yeah, we, we probably, yeah. But we cannot reuse stuff, and we cannot lower the number of lines of code for that. The problem is not just the number of lines of code, 
but the idea is it's just too big. When you review that PR, you're paying to review that PR, you, you just want to sleep, right? You, you don't want to do it. So it takes longer to review the PR, longer to merge the PR, and in general, the addition of models, they just take too much time. Now, if you also look at the interdependencies between different models, you have more than 3,400 uh, pieces of code that use the copied from sentence. That's cool, but that means like, there's a lot of repetition, and uh, actually, you cannot really know which code depends on which code, since it's not, a, like, it's not live, it's actually static. So even I don't know which one uses which one, which one depends on this one. So that's also becoming a problem. And then finally, um, there was a fight in Hugging Face. It was uh, Thomas Wolf versus Julien Chaumont, so CSO versus CTO. And one of them wanted to use inheritance and to add the Roberta model. So Roberta model is very, very close to BERT. It almost has no differences. This is the diff. Not impressive, right? Yeah. So Julien was really pushing to use inheritance, but then Tom said no. So today we have uh, 1,700 lines of code for BERT, 1,400 lines of code for Roberta. That's not efficient, right? So today we're going to introduce something super cool, inheritance. <laughs> yeah, we know it already existed. We know it's not something new in Python. It's just new for transformers. So the idea is you can use modularity and inheritance to create something we're going to call the modular XXX, so for example, modular llama file, where you're going to be able to import from a bird from whatever you want. And then we have a new linter that is going to unravel the inheritance. So we don't move away from the single model, single file policy. We just want to make sure people have a lot easier time contributing to the library while we keep the core principles that I've explained and the main uh, arguments are still valid for us. And people, well, they have in fights in the community. People are against, people are for. But with this, we believe that we've reached the uh, middle ground between that. So what we want is to prepare for a lot more and a lot more new models. So we have uh, around like 200 issues and transformers that are tagged with the new model, but there are also a lot of pull requests that have become stale, that are stale, or that aren't moving that much. And we know it's a barrier for people to contribute, so we really want to reduce that barrier. So if you look at the, the Cohere model release, it was, I think, 3,000 lines of code. But then if you refactor that with the, uh, the modular transformers, it only takes about 700 lines of code. So if we take the example of uh, Bert versus Roberta, Julien is finally going to get what he wants. This is going to be the new Roberta model. Of course, for every model that's automatically generated, you'll have this nice header that will tell you about it. We want, in the near future, all of the models and transformers to, to have this, so you'll see that around a lot. All of this is because we want to prepare for the V5. It's a quite a huge step for us. It hasn't ha a major release hasn't happened in the past four years. Uh, V5 has a lot of things prepared for, for everyone. Before I mention them, are there any uh, TensorFlow people here? Close your ears for a while, please. No TensorFlow for V5. 